I need to I need to find a card quickly and send you a card. Happy birthday, Mahmoud. So, Mahmoud, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-six. Forty years old. Forty, the big four-zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my younger brother by many years, almost my son. <laughs> <laughs> More yeah. questions? Go ahead, Sydney. No, no, that's right. Very interesting. Four years, it's the beginning of life. Yeah, I've four said. years, you're finally an adult. Yes, sure. You think it clearly. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. Shane, I have a question. The last at the end, there is an expression. You got to play. You got to play with God. God blah, blah, blah. I ask you, the, I, 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 I ask you, but I, I would like to reinforce that. So my, my question is, uh, this got, got to play, it, it's not got to, to it has nothing to do with have to play. It is, I got, but it, it, it's not the best construction. I would say you played, you have played with, why I got, when I use got normally. So, in this situation, once again, got is acting like a proverb. And in this situation, got means had the chance to. So, you got to play, you had the chance to play. Now, remember, everybody, you got to play. Well, let, me, let me say this first. Um, yeah, okay. Sometimes it means gotta, which means must or have to. So that's possible. But in the situation where it doesn't mean must, it doesn't mean have to, it means had the chance to or had the opportunity to. Okay. Give me a common example in daily conversation. Sure. Um, when I went to Chicago, I got to see... Uh, Bulls game. A Bulls is the, it's a, a basketball, okay? Okay, but in this case, it means I have to. No, no. So I'll okay, in the past, in the past, in the past. You are, I went to Chicago, I got, so as it is in the past, I got to see, okay. Now, try this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one I could I could use God. You gotta see a post game. In this one I could. Yep, yep, yep. So, so sometimes it, this is really tough to understand. What does the person mean? So you really need to understand the situation. Okay. Okay, so I have to understand the situation, but uh, in this case, I got you to, one question, this gotta, normally I have gonna, gonna means going to, mm -hmm. but uh, gotta means got to or means have to, because it is strange to have, I have no have, no word you have in gotta. Okay, I so, have a yeah, it's a good, a good question, I've talked about this many times, so, uh, you must, you have to, you've got to, you uh, got to, you gotta, are all the same. They are all the same, all the same thing. And I'll make it blue. Now, so what happens? You must is perfect. That's the perfect word. You have to is passive. It's very British. It's very, it's much nicer. It's mitigated speech. It's a nice, you must, very strong. You have to, sounds nicer. The meaning is the same. Now, Americans especially, we love to use got. We love to use got. You will see got constantly in American English. Always see it. So, sometimes we add it. You've got to. You have got to. That is okay for daily American English, but American English teachers hate it. They hate that. Now, the next level 
is we get rid of the VE. Now, Sydney, why do we get rid of the VE? Why? Why? Because of the pronunciation rule of and then VE and the word have. If the next word begins with a consonant, we can cancel the V sound. And that's the case here. We got a consonant, so we can cancel the V. So you've got becomes you've got, you've got, you got, you got, you got, it becomes you got, you got. Grammatically, we should have it there, but again, many times we never say it. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand, but in this case, the example you got to, to play, in this case, it was not we an never, obligation. So, so, in the situation where it means have the chance or opportunity, you can never say, Gotta. You can't. Okay. I, I understand. So, but this is a, a different situation. This got, because this, this is you got, blah, 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 is it, you know? Well, you have to give me this sentence, because got has many, many meanings. It depends on... No, the... no, in this case, you got to play. You got to play. It has nothing to do with this part to below. No, no, no. With, no, no. You have it to, you have it to nothing. No, no, I could say this. Oh, you gotta play. You gotta play. You gotta play. You gotta play. No. You have to. No, no. You gotta, okay, this. But, um, okay, so listen, this listen, example listen, is better. When listen, I went to to, to listen, listen to the difference. This one here. Um, you got to play. Oh, you got to play. That's great. You got to play. The next one, you gotta play. You gotta play. Oh, when you go there, you have to do it. You gotta play. You gotta play. It's your responsibility. You gotta play. Here, oh, wow, you did? That's amazing. You got to play. You had the chance to play. The intonation will be really different. Okay, it's very interesting because the gotta needs to be passed, but it's not passed. Don't, does not have, never. No, 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 it, ne it does not have to be. When you go to Chicago, you gotta see a Bulls game. You have to. You need to. You must. Just like, just like when she said here, uh, I got him. Just got doesn't, when we use it as a, a proverb, it can change tense too. Even though we say got, it's possible to mean future tense. Okay. And I tell students, if you really want to understand daily English, you have to master how the Amerikanskis use get and got because it's, a, it's really confusing. It's really tough stuff. So, um, Do you understand this sentence? This dialogue, this is A, uh, person A, and this is okay. person B. Okay, okay. Okay, you're right. Okay. So in okay. this case, it means have the opportunity. We can't say got. Future tense, we have to say get. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay, okay, all right. And oh, only one more question, Chen, please. Uh, premises and premise. Is there a difference between them? Premise and premises. Yes. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah, the pronunciation, yes. So, a premise is an argument that you use as the base. Premise. Premise. And the second one can be the plural or can be a building. It's plural. Premises. Premises. But this is a, a, a building. 
premises, the plural. Ah, premises. Spelling is different. No, it's the same. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, sure. It's the same. Pronunciation is different. So this is premises. Premises. And this is premises. Okay. So uh, premises is the plural. And premises is the building or location. Is it spelled the same? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, and I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, so, premise... <laughs> Um, Carmel, can you mute your microphone? Right now your microphone is green. If you click it, it will change to red. Thank you, thank you. So, Sydney, uh, this is premise, premise, and that means uh, conclusion uh, or, or something. Premises, with an, that's plural. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's different. Uh, where's the plural? There you go. Uh, premises. They're not going to show me the pronunciation, uh, but the pronunciation is premises. So premise and then premise. Premise. premises would be a house or a building. So we have to look at it two different words: premise and premises. Or premises. Yeah. Premises. 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 But is this why no? Schwa, yes. The same schwa, premises. No, uh, yes, but the other one, premises, uh, the other one is premises. Premises. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated to, to understand this, this, this concept, but I would say that, uh, suppose, uh, may I use he has one premises, how can I use this premises? As a house, as a building? Yes, how can I use that? Yeah. Um, he'll be at his premises tonight. Okay. We, excuse me, we rarely use the word. It's very, uh, it would be like a, a word that the police, uh, the police would use. It's very common for the police. These are called, gotcha. these are called homographs, where they're spelt the same, um, but the meaning is very different. Sometimes the pronunciation is different. Sometimes the pronunciation is the same. Um, so here's a couple of homographs right here um, and we say uh, desert deserted island uh, desert uh, as in you know this in in northern Africa uh, this is a bass this is a base this is close this is close this is to bow and this is a bow so these can get, these words can be so confusing um, and you just have to kind of hear hear them and repeat them. That's why, to me, premises, it's it's an is. I thought the for the building premises with it was an is because the pronunciation is a schwa premises premises. Premises. Roger that. Edelson, in the case a get to is the same as manage to. No. Ah, no, 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 no. Good guess, uh, or good, good, good one here. Let me go back there. So that's another usage. Uh, uh, so uh, Edelson has brought a, a great verb to our attention. I managed. Oops. I managed to see my mom 
I got to see my mom. I gotta see my mom. And remember, everybody, gotta is got to. Remember, it's the same thing. But I'm going to spell it differently so we can see the difference. So I gotta see my mom. I must, you know, tomorrow, next time. I got to see my mom, past tense. I had the chance, and this is a, this is, I want to say always, but I hate the word always. This is a very positive uh, opportunity uh, chance, okay? It's very good. Um, I managed to see my mom. This is different, and we wouldn't use got in this case. It means uh, I was able to see her uh, despite difficulty. Um, and in that case, could we ever say got? Because got can be a proverb. Okay. Yes, it's possible if we use the word finally. If, if we said, I finally, I finally got to see my mom. In that situation, yes. But we need the word finally. And then it implies managed to. So if we have the word finally, it's okay, but if we don't have the word finally, no, I don't think we could say got in that situation. But, but Shane, I got to see my mom. It's ambiguous. I don't know if it is the past or if an obligation. I have to analyze the context. Absolutely. Absol that's why got is a terrible word for ESL students. For Americans, pff, it's completely easy. We don't even think about it. But for ESL students, very confusing and very important word. But but for Americans, it's the same. I, I got to see my mom. If I say this sentence is related, is related he doesn't know if it's past or, pre or, or, or present. No, but the way we say it, we'll catch it. So I got to see my mom. Hey, I got to see my mom. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I got to see my mom. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, okay, we, okay. We, because of the tone, we absolutely will will get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> uh, is the word premise premises a syn synonymous to facility? Yeah. But facility can have a lot of meanings, but yes. Once again, premises is a good word for cops. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to look up the word premise, premises. Uh, and I'm going to do this. I'm looking up news. Uh, and I'm going to type at his premises. Oops. And let's see what comes up. Okay. Uh, so this is a terrified animals commercial. It sounds like police. This is just at his location. Military road. Yeah, this sounds like uh, police. This is police. Found on my premises. Sounds like police. So once again, uh, when we say the word premises, stolen, it uh, as soon as an American hears the word premises, we're going to think a police-related incident, and we're going to think somebody, the, somebody's home or their business, probably their home, maybe their business. So as soon as we hear premises, most Americans are going to relate it to police and uh, the victim or the bad guy's home or business. He was arrested at his premises. He was arrested at his house. Uh, they took the car from the victim's premises. They took the car from the victim's house, maybe business. So when we say when premises equals home, it does not equal facility. So we have to be careful. Facility has a lot of possible meanings. Premises is part of that 
but not always. You do not live in a facility, but you do reside at your premises, but it's not a facility. It's your house. You said you reside? Yeah, because once again, when we say premises, live and premises just don't really go together. So um, reside, which means the same thing. This is co-location, guys. This is co-location. Um, live equals, oops, live equals reside. Uh, premises can equal a uh, house. And live and house go together very nicely, but reside and premises go together very nicely. Uh, reside and house, okay. Live premises, okay. Reside premises, yes. Live house, yes. Valerie, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, okay. I like to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Valerie, then Edelson. Okay, um, just a question. When uh, I speak with American people, they always say that I have an English accent. And I would like to know how I can, I can change it, what I have to say, how I have to speak to have more an American accent. I don't think it's necessary. However, um, mm -hmm. if you want to tell your coaches, first of all, you should tell your coaches you want that. Um, one thing when you speak, one thing that's very clear in your speech are your T's. Your T sounds are very clear, which is great. But Americans, mm -hmm. we don't have clear T's. We have flat yeah. T. We have flat T's and we have stop T's. Um, but mm -hmm. Valerie, when you speak, it tends to sound <laughs> very clear, which is quite British. But that's mm -hmm. all right. Okay. So it, it doesn't change the way that I can be understood by American people at all. In fact, Americans would probably uh, prefer that you keep your British pronunciation because Americans like the British pronunciation. Um, really? Okay. Oh, we do, yeah. We think of it as intellectual. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Uh, but for me, it, it's a bit strange because it's always more difficult for me to understand um, British series than American ones, and I don't know why. It's, Vocabulary. Uh, ah, you think? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big reason. British Eng people think British English and American English, it's just pronunciation. No, 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 no. The vocabulary is very different. That's why in America... British TV shows are not popular at all because we don't know what the hell they're talking about. We understand the words, but we don't know what they're talking about. But because of Hollywood, American TV shows are popular in the UK because they speak British English and they understand American English. That's probably the big reason. Okay, okay. So... So just be careful with my T's, or I keep it like that. And um, okay. Yeah, personally, because I know your your speaking uh, ability, I think it's absolutely fine. You should be very happy. Um, but uh, when you when you have role play practice with the coaches, um, mm -hmm. remind them, hey, if you hear something that sounds British. Please correct me, or please okay. Americanize me. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh, good idea. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay, thanks. You bet, Edelson. Hello, Coach Shane. Uh, I'd like to make a point about your example of the word manage, "manager" in, in the past. In "Managed," it's very difficult to pronounce the word "managed" plus two. You, I teach you how to do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'd like to know: is it is it possible to say I managed the C plus a schwa and drop the T? No, managed. That's a good the question. No. So, 
First of all, what's the rule? Do you remember the rule? Uh, the strong sound uh, similar sound. Okay. Similar sounds next to each other, what do we do? 80% uh, the strong sound and 20% the weak sound. No, no, not strong and weak. So we connect and focus on the second sound. So in this case, we have a D and a T. They're similar sounds. So we connect those sounds and we focus on the second sound. And you're right. Uh, to put that in numbers, uh, it would be 20% to the first sound and 80% to the second sound, okay? I talk about this all the time in the pronunciation section, so you guys keep watching that. Now, this can go all the way to 1% and 99%. People say, can we cancel? Mm, I really don't want you to think cancellation, but 1%, 99%, is almost canceled. So, manage de, no. Manage to, yes. Now, so again, manage to is going to be absolutely perfect. Is it possible to say manage de? Yes, it is. It is possible to do that because to has seven different sounds of the sounds de and to. So it is actually possible for some people. Some people never use a t. They always use the. I want to go. I want to go. Uh, it's po especially when you live in the country. The country, then then that t t sound is gonna sound like a d. So that's possible. It is possible. But should you do it? No. Okay, I got it. Thank you. I have a question uh, regarding the, the word because and cause. I, a couple of days ago, I was listening to a British podcast, and I, I noticed that the British guy said because instead of say because. Yep. So not only that, uh, in America, when we say because, many times we shorten it, right? Because. And spelling is what? C-U-Z. And the British people do that too, but the spelling is different. Do you know what the spelling is? No. C-O-S. And it's cos, cos, because the pronunciation is different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pronunciation, the vowel sounds will especially be different from British and American English. So in America, because, cause, cause, because, 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 and I'll try the UK, because, because, cause, 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 something like that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yep. Valerie, try the sentence. Uh, hold on, uh, I need to, to see that. my... Uh, uh, Valerie, not, you're not Valerie Edelson. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> So, I managed to see my mom. Right, and you said two, which is absolutely fine, but that's a sign of ESL student. Mm -hmm. And because it's two, it's very clear, so it's even British. So, remember, the word two has how many pronunciations, do you know? Seven. Yes, and we say ta, da, ta, da, t, d and of course, two. And which are the most common? T. Or? T. Yes. And they're equally as common. Um, in this situation, because we have a pronunciation rule, it's going to keep the T. So we're, are we going to say two? Mm, we're going to say T. So I managed to see, I managed to see, I managed to see my mom. I managed to see my mom. That was... Chicago. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. And if I want to say that in the 
present tense, I manage chasing. Uh, so, like a pause between the two or... So, once again, in this situation, we have to change our verb, too. But, ah, okay. But I'll mm -hmm. manage... Yeah, this is possible, very rare, uh, because it implies difficulty, which has... which you have experienced. It's possible to do it, but not too common. So, in this case, uh... I'll manage to see my mom. I'll manage to see my mom. Try it. I'll manage to see my mom. Good. And let's do this one. I managed to I see ma my mom. Okay. I managed to see my mom. I'll okay. manage to see my mom. I'll manage to see my mom. So the tone really, for the native speaker, we're going to okay. sense the tone difference. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Mohammed Riza is here too. Coche. Go ahead, Edison. Coche. When when we have uh, how plus two, for example, I don't know how to play guitar. Uh, in this case, it sounds like a kind of flap T. Okay. Yep. I agree. How? The... I agree. So uh, it's we don't say how we say ha. So it's going to be uh, uh, hara. 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 So, what I tell students, the flat T is most similar to what? A D. A D? D? Yeah. Um, lots of students want to say a flat T is similar to an R. Maybe in your language, but not in English. Not in English. Um, it's, uh, the flat T is similar to a D, and the perfect example would be... Uh, uh, this word, little, 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 it's a D. Uh, it's not a D, but it's almost a D. Little, 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 little. It's basically a D. It's a flat T, but it's very similar to a D. So, hara, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to cook. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to cook. The don't and the how to, the d and the t, are going to be the same. I don't know how to cook. 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 Mahmoud says, if the sound before is a vowel or a voiced consonant like the NG, then Americans will usually make that a flap T. I agree. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's exactly right. What Mahmoud said uh, is a very good rule. Not always, but generally, that's right. If there's a vowel before the T, especially a vowel before and after, uh, or if there's an NG consonant in there, a, a nasal consonant, a vibrated consonant, flat T is very possible. I especially like vowel T vowel. Gotta. Hara. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, tomez-vous, tomez-vous. Are you guys sleeping? <laughs> Cochain, Co Cochain, I, I have a question. You have a question? That's uh, When you Go have... <laughs> Uh, my my question is when we have a uh, double O uh, such as foot and book, when I say that it's a long U and short, like uh, right foot food. Yeah. So uh, the uh, uh, the sound that falls, the sound that falls, or that's closer to a schwa is going to be your uh, short sound. So this is a short oh oh and ooh ooh we gotta shoot that sound out. That's your long double O. So uh, foot 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 food 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 uh, book 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 
Puck, 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 poo, 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 poo. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there any trick to identify when I have to, to make a short sound and long sound? Because the, uh, both of them are, there is a consonant after the, these two words. There is no difference. Zero difference. Uh, but as, as a native English speaker, do you know why I know the difference? Because of my mom. Listen, repeat. That, seriously, yeah. There's no, and that's, so fortunately for you, you probably know these words. Unfortunately, your mom probably didn't use those words. So it's listening and repeating and memorizing. I hate the word memorize, but for some people, memorizing would be good. That's right. So the should is also a uh, short it's so what so in the IPA symbol the IPA symbol is this is it this or is it the other way is it this I can't remember I think it's this uh, I think that is the second the second uh, one the second one yeah okay thank you so this uh, and this this is the schwa these two sounds are the same. They're the same. The difference is the schwa means no stress. So we could say the book and for no stress, the book. Okay, so, so for example, the book or the, the book, the same vowel. I used a schwa, the, the, schwa, the book. Book. I use the short double O, but the the uh 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 book uh uh the uh 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 they're the same vowels, the di and the the symbols are different. So when you see a schwa, there's no stress, there's no stress, and when you see this symbol, there could be stress. There doesn't have to be, but there could be. Uh, so the should we would not say the should is a short O. We wouldn't say that. Uh, we would say the should is this symbol, and I don't even, or this symbol, sorry, and I don't even know the name of the symbol. Americans, unless you're an English teacher, Americans do not know IPA symbols. Don't know them. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm making a, we're make, my team and I, we're making a vocabulary book, and uh, we, we were arguing should we use IPA symbols or not? And uh, I have other English teachers, and they said, please. So I decided, no, because <laughs> I'm evil. However, the book will have audio, uh, so, and the audio will go with the book, so you'll be able to hear everything. I want students to stop relying on reading and start relying on their ears. Uh, it's very important to get to that level. So, so should is the same as a short double O, yes, which is also the same as a schwa. When you have the should, could, and would, plus have, which one is more common to say, shoulda or shoulda've? Coulda or could've? Yep. So I'll write it down. Any of them are possible. As a native English speaker, I say all equally as much. I could have gone, 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 I could have gone. Absolutely, I will use all three. The difference would be, but I didn't. Emphasizing uh, 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 didn't. Um, I could have gone, uh, I would say this one probably has a nuance, but I didn't want to. Um, I could have gone, but uh, I wanted to do something else. So the difference would be probably, 
there could be no difference. There could be no difference. But if there is a difference by saying everything clearly, emphasize. As I tell you guys, when we say words clearly, we're emphasizing. So what is the nuance? I could have gone. The nuance is not. Okay? So I didn't. Uh, I could have gone a little bit faster, but I didn't want to. You know, I was tired or I was hungry. I could have gone, but I wanted to do something else that has a nuance. It's like, you're, I could have gone. Very, like, non-caring, like, your heart's not there. So the nuance would be, but I wanted to stay home. I wanted to watch TV, something like that. So I will say all three, they could have the same meaning. If there is a difference, then this is where the nuance probably is. Probably. Mahmoud, you're hired. You can be an editor. I would love that. Thank you. I with you. Ah, oh, that's great. What is the goal for with this book to help uh, us speak more naturally? No. Um, this is. If you go to the bookstore, they have many, many vocabulary books, right? Yeah. Um, and most of the vocabulary books are targeted to uh, SAT, TOEFL, IELTS test, academic vocabulary, right? So our vocabulary book is going to be targeted to daily English. So we're, what we're doing is, is we're taking all my DDM and all my perf glossaries. We're taking those words, huge glossaries, and we're picking the best words or best expressions or best phrases. And we're going to make this type of a, a vocabulary, vocabulary phrase book. So uh, we've just begun, and uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out how we want to do it, but that's the idea. That's the idea. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> it should be fun, it, and we plan to make it uh, an interesting book, too, not just a boring vocabulary book, but actually lots of fun. <laughs> With audio files, too. So. And audio, you know, sometimes you have to buy it separately. No, our <laughs> audio will be free. Okay. Okay. It's possible, Edelson, but generally no, but it's possible. So this and this should absolutely be different, but depending, maybe a New York person might sound similar. This is a short U, and this is a short O. Vowel. So what is the short U? Give me an example of the word, uh, of a word with a short U. What's a short U? Give me a word. Short U. Simple word. Nope. No. Cut. Uh, cut. Cut. Uh, cut. Fun. Sun. What's a short O? Short O words. Boss? No. no. I drew a blank. <laughs> I know this, and this is something you guys need to know. You really need to know. An ah ah sound. Okay. So this. I know it's it's crazy because the A should be why is it, why is this why is the O and ah I I know it's confusing but it is <laughs> sorry so these sounds are all the same ah 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 this has a W of course but these sounds are all the same uh 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 uh, uh. Now, in this word, 
once, once, uh, uh, once, once. This word, ah, uh, ah, uh, wants, wants. So once and wants to the American, completely different. But like I said, somebody in New York might, you know, these sounds might sound similar. Should you guys? No, because your English coach speaks perfect American English. You should distinguish these sounds. I'm so flexible. We, ah, uh, that's in Perth. Yeah, anyway. Does the word gone have a diphthong or not? N it shouldn't. Uh, what vowel sound is in this word? What's the vowel sound in that word? That's the sharp, sharp U? Yeah. Yeah. Sharp O? No. It's the same as this word. Valerie, you said that earlier. Yeah. A Oh, okay. Oh. 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 Now, this is standard oh. American pronunciation. The A-W is an A-W. It's its own sound. Oh, oh. So is it a diphthong? Oh. No, it's not a diphthong. Gone. Boss. Gone. Boss. However, because the A-W, so I'll make a diagram of the A-W. These are your upper teeth, and these are your lower teeth, and the A-W requires the tip of your tongue to go into the soft part, and your jaw needs to go down. This part is very hard. It's all bone, and then it's soft, ah, ah, and your tongue stays there, ah, ah, ah. Now, the problem is, why does it seem like a diphthong? Because we have to go from the ah to the N. And where is the N sound? The N sound is up here. So this movement creates some sound changes which seem like it might be a diphthong, but actually it's not. Gone. 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 I'm going to ask a silly question, I think. Um, can you explain how Perf works, really? So, yeah, Perf is fun. In Perf, um, I give, every week I give an assignment. Mm -hmm. And your job is to read the assignment, to think about the assignment, and then to do the assignment. You have to uh, become an American. Okay, so I'll show you our current assignment. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'll read those words to you, uh, Mahmoud. Uh, hold on a second. Where is my box? There we go. So do we have the, the audio to mimic the pronunciation nope. of the words? No. Nope. Uh, we have to guess. Yeah. I don't like the word oh. guess, but, but that's yes. Essentially, you have to guess. So let's go to perf. So this perf assignment is... Uh, I'll just read it to you. Perf 117. You are having a dinner party. You are the host. And the party has a theme. Indian food. You should be very excited about this. But you also know that most of your guests are probably not very familiar with the different types of Indian cuisine. Everyone knows curry. What else is there? Some people might be nervous about trying something too different. How can you give them courage and make them excited? It'll be fun and delicious and educational, right? So this is the theme. You have to, you're having a party, you're very excited, but you know some people might be nervous, they might not be too excited, so you need to encourage them 
with uh, your words. And this is the assignment. So this is what the student must practice. They have to read this and practice it. And they have to look up the words. Uh, so we got tandoori and, of course, curry. Uh, we've got naan. We've got biryani. And we've got balti. So these are new words for most of the students. Cauliflower, recipe, aesthetics, lots of difficult things. So the student needs to practice and practice and practice, and then they need to send me a recording. Now, when they send the recordings, I listen to the students' recordings. And what I'm looking for is, their, number one, their pronunciation. What are the big problems? Number two, the intonation. Were the students able to find the important words? Number three, the rhythm. How was their grouping? How was their pausing? And number four, the flow. Did they sound like this you? Did they sound like the real person? Uh, and then I teach them how to do it. So I teach them the pronunciation. I teach the intonation, the rhythm and flow. And finally, I show them how they should do it. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's really tough, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it is. But a lot of practice at the same time, and we are looking for it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep, that's right. So uh, for Mahmoud, uh, for Edel, uh, Mahmoud, sorry, Mahmoud, uh, biryani, biryani, biryani. And actually, Mahmoud, I'm going to verify that because I do have some Indian students, but I'm going to verify with an American. Uh, and uh, because I'm going to do the American style pronunciation. Edelson, those two words, when spoken quickly, sound the same. When spoken slowly, sound different. So clothes, 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 clothes. But as you know, Edelson, the Z is a strong sound. And the TH is a weak sound. And it is possible to cancel the TH. Nice clothes. Nice clothes. Zero TH. Absolutely possible. Um, if I said winter instead of winter, you would have lowered my grade. Yes. So the, another great example is the word winter. Can we cancel the T? Yes. Winter. Uh, it's possible. I love winter. Oh, I love winter. Absolutely no T. However, for perf students, if they cancel the T, I lower their grade. I don't give grades, but I would not be happy. Um, for perf, I want perfection. I want you to sound like a television narrator. Absolute perfection. You've heard me talk about having an international dinner. International, international, absolutely Americans say international, but for my perf students, I want to hear international, international. It doesn't have to be British, but it needs to be American, but it needs to be perfect, like an elementary school teacher. I'm not nice to my students. <clears throat> I'm a coach. Work hard. Play hard. Succeed. Muhammad and Artem have said nothing except hi, waiting for name 100,013. Who are you? Sounds very computer-esque. Yes, Valerie? Uh, I just have to go, so I say thank you to everyone, and uh, see you next week if I can. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You have a, a fantastic uh, evening, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Carmel asks this word. Yeah, it's a great word. Who wants to try it? What's the pronunciation of this word? 
So, go Dwar. ahead. What? Dwar. Dwar. I don't know how to pronounce, to pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, Dwar? Edison did a really good job. It's basically the same as this. The easy pronunciation. Can you say this word? Door? Yep. Drawer. Drawer. Yes. Now, that's the easy pronunciation. Drawer. Drawer. Some Americans will say drawer, drawer, drawer. But that's really rare. I would prefer that your pronunciation, door, door, drawer, drawer, be the same as door, door, drawer, door, drawer. If you say that, everybody will understand you. Okay. It's a good uh, trick. Yeah. trick. And it's easy to remember because by the drawer, there's usually a door, right? <laughs> yes. That's right. Thanks. Okay. So, S, Z, and th it doesn't matter if it's before or after the strong sounds and the s and the z are strong sounds they can cancel the th in front and behind it really doesn't matter so it's better to give me sentences because context words we want to keep the th but non context words Front, back, S, Z relationship, doesn't matter. We generally, Americans will cancel. For you as a speaker, I want you to do your best to get it close. Uh, great. So, clothes, uh, uh, his thinking, his thinking, his thinking thinking, his thinking, his thinking. That's what I want you to do. I want perfection. You can do it. There should be no extra rhythm right from the TH to the Z, TH to the S, S to the TH, Z to the TH, but it takes lots of practice. As the native English speaker in DDM, when you're listening to the native English speaker, we cancel. <laughs> But you, as the speaker, I want you to keep it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I know. My jokes are always bad. My jokes are for me, not really for you guys. <laughs> Muhammad, I see your mic is on, but I can't hear you. Say something. I cannot hear. Ah, we have this problem sometimes. If you have a question, Muhammad, uh, please type it out, and uh, I'll be able to answer you. Artem, what is the difference in using the preposition on and in? Uh, in time? Oh, good question. Um, yeah, so we use these the same, but there is going to be a nuanced difference. Do it in time uh, generally means before the deadline. Uh, do it on time would mean by the deadline. So if the deadline were 3 p.m., let's say the deadline were 3 p.m., uh, do it in time, you know, 2.30, 2.45, uh, all of that's good. Uh, and do it on time, I would expect uh, 2.59 or even 3 p.m. is when you do it. Uh, but, again, we'll use them interchangeably. Muhammad, I see you're trying, and it's not working. 
You can type your question again, Mohammed, uh, but don't give up on the microphone. Uh, Edelson, when we have the letter R before a T or a D with a flat T sound, such as order, accordance, party, 40, do you have any trick to make those two letters more clear? Ah, yeah. So the problem, so this is why some students say the flat T is the same as the R. Mm -mm. No. Uh, and this is the perfect example. Party, party, party. So it's better to think par D. It's better to think D, par D. What's important to remember is the R, when we do the American R, your tongue touches nothing. Par, but you can see it goes up. Par, and then I, like, it's like if you bite a lemon, it's sour. Watch. Par. And the more I go lemon, the stronger the R. For students who have an R problem, you can bring the tip of your tongue further back. Par. Par. It doesn't sound that nice, but it teaches you the R sound. Also, if your tongue is way back there, then it's easy to understand the R flat T difference. Party, 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 party. But for the professional speakers, party, party, party. It's just a flip, a flick of the tongue. Very tough. Hi, Muhammad. I see that you're typing. Hi. Uh, so what's the trick? Make sure your R is perfect. Party! Americans like to say, let's go party! What would you like to order? Or, or, order. What would you like to order? Yeah, we're, yeah, another question here. Uh, we are about to, and we are going to. Are they the same? Um, let's see here. We're about to. We could use them interchangeably. Hi, Mohammed. Just a second. I hear you now. Uh, we could use them interchangeably. Yeah, I can hear you. Just a second, okay? Uh, yes. Hello, dear coach. <laughs> Hello. Uh, there, is a proverb, there is a proverb say, may, uh, men make houses, women make homes. Uh, could you explain what uh, the difference between house and home? You bet, you bet. Let me do this one first and then I will, okay? Yes. All right. So we're about to, we're about to, uh, within a minute or two. Uh, we are going to, uh, it could be in a minute, it could be next week. So we are going to is not so time specific. Uh, but again, uh, oh, we're about to go to the store. Oh, we're going to go to the store. Same thing. In that situation, the feeling would be the same. But uh, are you going to write your mom? Oh, I'm about to write my mom. Oh, I'm going to write my mom. I'm about to write my mom. Where's my pencil? I'm going to write my mom after I do my homework, after I come back from Chicago, something like that. Thank you, Edelson. So uh, they could be the same, but they could be very different. And let me go to Muhammad's question. House and home. Another great question. House actually refers to the building. And home refer refers to that feeling of you know if you go to your friend's house it's a nice house and it's it's their stuff but when you come to your house or your mother's house it's like ah, this feeling of safety warmth love family that's home so men build houses but women build homes that's generally true, generally very true. Men do the construction and women put the life or the love into uh, the building. Does that make sense, Muhammad? Thank you very much. You bet.
Good to hear you. Great, thank you. All right, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm out of here. I do have another Hangout, as you guys should know, uh, starting in four hours, about four hours later. So if you're not sleeping, you can join me. I know Carmel won't be sleeping, but she might be eating dinner. I'm Shane, I got a question. <laughs> Go for it, Artem. Uh, sometimes uh, you said, you say word business like business, yeah? And recently I've done some DDM and black guy said was, was not like what not. Maybe you say another word that way. Yep. Hello, this is Mike. Hold on a second, Artem. Bum, 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 bum. Mm -hmm. Young man, I have a video for you. Uh, and this is on the so I'll, I'll put the link in the chat room. Uh, isn't, isn't, wasn't, wasn't, hasn't, hadn't, doesn't, doesn't, business, didn't, business, tisn't, didn't. Uh, and this video will ex explain all that stuff. Okay, young man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Do you see the link? Did you get the link? In the yeah. Chat. Okay, good. That's a good question. Yeah, and mm, I don't recommend it not wasn't, hadn't, doesn't, didn't. I don't recommend that because it's too urban. It's too black. Uh, business is also black, but for some reason, lots of white, MBA business professionals like to use it. Hey, how's your business? None of your business. And personally, I think it's stupid, but uh, that is business is pretty common. Uh, it didn't, wouldn't, that's pretty black, pretty urban, pretty ebonics. So recognizing it is good. Using it, I don't, rec I don't really recommend it. I can't remember what I said in that video. That video, oh, almost four years old. My God. Old. I'm getting old. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, tomorrow, uh, today we have one at 3 p.m. Los Angeles, which is in about four hours. And then... Six hours, so about 30 hours later, we, ha we do have another one on Friday. This is mainly for students in Asia, uh, but uh, this is mainly for students in America and Brazil, uh, South America, rather. So uh, I'm very happy that you guys could join me today. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, shokran and uh, spasibo. Thank you, Kuchin. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for your answers. My pleasure. I love it. We'll do this again. Uh, and I hope that, you know, keep an extra file of questions. And uh, I look forward to doing my best to help you in the future too, okay? Thank you very much, Shane. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 See you soon. Thank you, Shane. Bye-bye.